Last time on Bloodlines. I just thought you should know that the alliance between your prince and the Kuei Jin has come to an end. LaCroix saw an opportunity to rid himself of two problems. A hardened rebel leader and a problematic primogen in one fell stroke. And as you can see, I was integral to his plan. LaCroix convinced me that an alliance with a Camarilla could strengthen the position of the Kuei Jin. And so with my help, your prince framed Nines Rodriguez for the murder of Alistair Grout. Alliance? A Camarilla prince aligned with foreign devils? Preposterous! Don't you see through their trick? They've told you this lie, this impossible, staggering deception in an attempt to skew your loyalties and spread dissension amongst our ranks. As of this moment, there is no blood hunt against Nines Rodriguez. The Kuei Jin have revealed their plot. <laughs> they want us to war against each other? Well, to that I propose an alliance with the Anarchs. Together, we kindred shall drive out these foreigners once and for all. Go to the last round immediately. Tell them the Kuei Jin have admitted to killing Grout and that the blood hunt against Nines Rodriguez is officially over. Tell them I have realized the true threat the Kuei Jin pose and wish to negotiate a pact. Nines is... Uh, oh, I still don't know if I should be telling anyone, but... Nines is hiding out in Griffith Park. If Nines agrees to the Alliance, ugh, I guess that means me and the Cam will be on the same side. Kid, we've been followed. That fire's coming from all directions. It's man-made. We gotta get out of here. This is bad. Shit! It's leaving! Come on, kid, we gotta get inside that building until it comes back! Come on, kid, get in the car. The sun will be up. We gotta get the hell out of here. LaCroix put out the word. He says you're in league with the Kuei Jin, Ming Zhao's puppet. That you're the one who set up nines for her. See, he's figured it all out. And now your death is a big bullet point in his new unity campaign. There's a blood hunt on you. He had to turn things around on you real quick since you found out about his deal with Ming Zhao. This is his plan B. Plan A was to kill you in nines in Griffith Park. I got a driver who can get you where you need to go. Interesting guy, you like him. But this place is being watched. He's across Santa Monica by the junkyard. Get there and he'll get you out of town. He'll take you wherever. Wherever you feel safest. Where to? Are you certain? The fee will be steep. Very well. Bloodlines Tremere Playthrough Part 14. It's time to make a choice. I solicited your thoughts and the reactions to any alliance was, well, Tepid is putting it generously. The preference was for Lone Wolf. Lone Wolf it is. So you know Jack? I only recently made the acquaintance of Mr. Jack. He intrigues me very much. There are so few like him these nights, I think. But then, I only know what I hear from others about the kindred of this city. It sounds as if there are many who seek to sway the children of Cain to their side. Many who believe they shape the destiny of the blood. You work for Prince LaCroix, don't you? I work for no one. I'm out of this city. Good riddance, L.A. You could run, but do you really think you could escape your reputation? I know little about you, except the rumors that you've killed the Anarch leader and betrayed your own kind. That's all bullshit. You have been accused. If you were to run, this reputation would travel with you until your final night. Your only recourse is to clear this charge, or to smite the conspirators working against your good name. I don't trust anyone anymore except me. This is the path of legends and pariahs. I have walked before with those who have tried to cast off jihad. Their reasons were many, but their paths always ended in the same place. Emptiness. Turn this taxi around. I'll wash my name clean with the blood of my enemies. If you must, Ming Zhao and LaCroix, when they are destroyed, the city will become chaos. With no hits, you can walk past this beast and into a legend. But you may never know peace. The lives of legends are the prey of the ambitious. 
What are the odds that I'll ever know peace anyway? Thanks for your concern, but I'll be just dandy. Then I will drop you off in Chinatown. Your legend can grow there. Well, we're going to make a couple of stops Way first. Too. For starters, let's drop by our haven. Before we head upstairs, we're going to go see Maximilian Strauss, Tremere Regent. I'm not actually sure that he's here since we did opt against the Camarilla Alliance. Oh. Greetings, Neonate. I have heard of your recent difficulties with LaCroix. I can't say that I am surprised. Love of power always leads to betrayal. But I am glad that you have survived. Thanks, Max. We're on a first-name basis now, it seems. It's time to end this. So I'll do all the endings, and you'll see that if we go Camarilla, that same exchange goes somewhere else. Here? I don't know. The end game is short on dialogue, so I guess you could see this is adding some flavor for Chantry Dwellers. But I would have expected, I don't know, a rebuke maybe? One last check of the old email. A friend, presumably the chess master, advises us not to open it. I'm gonna scavenge our cash for vendor loot, ammo, whatever. While I do that, four people have advised us not to open the sarcophagus, which would suggest that we'll have an option to open it or not. If you have any thoughts on that, leave them in the comments. We're at the end game, but I'm still reluctant to sell these skill books. They will serve absolutely no purpose for us. But I still don't want to. I can't reconcile that, but I'm going to lean into the preference. Okay, all good here. Where to? Now we're going to visit Mercurio for some supplies and a bit of dialogue. We could buy blood, and we probably will a little later on. Where it is you turned your back on the Camarilla? I don't understand. I served these people for 30 years, they've always treated me well. I think you're making a big mistake, but I'm not gonna stop you. I got no death wish. They tried to have me killed. Nothing personal against you. Now I need some guns. Ah, but before we do that, I still have a few questions. Concerning? People. Who exactly? Troika Games, yes indeed. We can only ask about Troika at this specific juncture. Let's hear what he has to say about Troika Games. RPG house, not in L.A. It's in Irvine, a little south. Tim Kaine, Leonard Boyarsky, and Jason Anderson are the major players. Working on a secret project. I don't know much about it. Camarilla's concerned they know too much. <laughs> That's great. Tim, Leonard, and Jason co-founded Troika. They met at Interplay when they were working on Fallout together. Hell of a pedigree. And a nice little fourth wall break for us. We have a nice bankroll that we've amassed throughout the game and unsold vendor loot. I won't skip out on flamethrower ammo and a few other things, but I'm gonna go in light. Anyway, we're bloodcasters first and foremost. Besides, if I have a lot of ammo, I'll use it. I think we're good. Where to? Chinatown and step on it. Before we move in, let's allocate some of this experience. We'll max out perception for ranged combat. Let's max thaumaturgy for blood boil. And I guess that's it. We have over 50 experience in reserve. And that's where it'll sit. Prediction? We'll close out this game with an excess of 60 experience unused. And if that's how it works out, I'm just fine with it. Stowing experience away is a good habit to have in case you get stuck on a late stage encounter, but I think we'll be just fine. All right, let's do them. Blood Boil has a lethal explosive AoE, catastrophic damage, but as you'd guess it's best used on multiple people, not just the one goofball like that. Silly me, I should have had that shield up a while ago.
I thought I had a little more Glock ammo in reserve. Oh well. Nice exorcist moment, sir. Go out with a bang, right? Now that's what I'm talking about. Ugh, but I'm slipping on this guy's rib cage. That's just gross. Impeded by Viscera, the classic Valve engine experience. Odd that the dude on the right could hit me while he was in the throes of blood theft. Huh. Nice, and we are off. Let's re-up that blood shield. A little awkward scrolling through the disciplines, only so many hotkeys. If I haven't mentioned it before now, that hand wiggling gesture that occurs when we use a discipline, that's endemic to the plus patch. It's not in the base patch or the base game. So if you catch me spamming disciplines down the road, it means we're no longer using the plus patch. Uh, this door will zone us back out. As far as I know, the Quay Gen have to open the next door for us. There we go. This level also houses the barracks. There are pickable chests with various types of ammo. I'd be remiss were I not to mention it, but we're gonna plow ahead without it. Wow, look at you taking all that punishment. Good for you. You know, I think we'll just have a bit of your blood instead. Whoops, got myself in a blood theft rhythm. It happens. There's a water wheel. No doubt a few enemies down there behind various pillars and whatnot. And this beam is not doing me any favors. There we go. All right, let's head down. Play. 
This isn't bad. I was expecting much more of a swarm. Feeding on a thefted enemy, obnoxious, I know. Call it a flex. We can move these bamboo pole traps. Oh, and the switches? You can just jump directly over them, but I'm not very practiced at it. If you hit the ceiling, or what the game's collision determines to be the ceiling, it does that aughts thing where it stops your arc, you stick to the ceiling a little bit, sometimes getting stuck in the ceiling, then you drop straight down, probably onto the tile you were trying to avoid. So there's an art to that and I haven't mastered it. Wow, for some reason his pyro crossbow was a repeater. I'd love to know his trick. I haven't used the raw blade yet, so here, just so we can say we did. All right, a little bit of a puzzler. There are these movable stone carvings and we push those onto a couple of pressure plates to reveal the hidden exit. This game is pretty sparse on environmental puzzles. So when they occur, you aren't really looking for them. Which is to say, I bet this took me a fair bit of time to figure out back in the day. And the next sub level. This is clearly another puzzle, albeit one you could probably miss if you didn't have eyes for it. Four pedestals, the base have distinctive designs, spiral, four-legged stand, and so on. We'll take note of those and proceed onward. These Kui Jin have distinctive red tops. No valid target found. Huh. Apparently I can't blood boil them. That's interesting. Recall what I said about traps a few minutes ago? Well, these Kui Jin are guarding statuettes for the pedestals in the main room. You see them. You go running towards them and, well, these blade traps will one hit you instant final death. There's another switch on the other end of the hall. I have seen people jump over them just fine. Like they just have the feel for it. And it's a skill that I need to acquire at some point. This cat statuette sits atop a pedestal with two circles in the base. There's a corresponding pedestal in the main room. That's the puzzle in a nutshell. Rinse and repeat for each pedestal. Just have to remember which goes where. Straightforward enough as far as puzzles go. Thank you, sir. So that's two statues of the four. We need to find the other two. Hopefully it doesn't spoil too much, but we're gonna find them in a hallway that looks just like the one we finished. 
which also means two more blade traps. By the way, this being the plus patch, we were supposed to run into Yuki in the courtyard. I'm not sure why we didn't, but typically you do. So perhaps another time. Alright, let's get these jokers. Dragon statuette. And then this one on the four-legged stand is the elephant statuette. Okay, excellent. Well, we have the statuettes. Now it's just a matter of dropping them on the pedestals. Alright, so this sort of plane base was the dragon. This spiral one was the crane. Elephant on the four-legged pedestal, then cat on the remaining pedestal. Nice. Well, that seems significant. Let's honor it with a save. Well, heck, let's walk into it. Ah, of course. You've become a grave disappointment, Kindred. This was not meant to be your destination, but your path will end here. My purpose is not yours to decide. You were never more than a pawn, Kindred. Puppet of those who drew the boundaries on your horizon. It was I who sensed in you the power to right the balance of this city. It will give me no joy to bring you final death. You won't need to do any mourning for me. You, on the other hand... You will have time to ponder this folly as you are devoured by worms and disease in the hell of burrowing maggots. A thousand years shall you suffer. Whatever. Hey, we're going to fight Cthulhu. How about that? Lovecraft has entered the battlefield. So this boss fight is traditionally straight up difficult. It can get pretty dicey. Let's see how it goes. And I forgot to reload my flamethrower before the fight. That's embarrassing. Uh, let's go ahead and chalice up. Where's the chalice? Our inventory is in disarray with all the vendor loot. Wow, so we're burning her down. This is not a typical experience, but I'm not mad at it. Blood theft is both obliterating her and stunning her most effectively. And that's it, Ming Zhao is dead. There's no cinematic or anything, so here's a retro stage complete sequence just for you.
Now let's see what the game has to say. Ming Xiao must die. You have done away with Ming Xiao and found the key. It's time for the prince to fall. And that takes us to Royal Flush. Deliver the key to the prince and deal with him. And not in that order, damn it. Let's grab the key. In part 15, we confront LaCroix and wrap this up. But before we go, Ming Xiao's form was straight out of Lovecraft. But do you recall that first news report we heard in our apartment in Santa Monica? A massive gelatinous creature that washed up on the beaches of Providence, Rhode Island, has scientists scratching their heads. Found by a jogger early on Tuesday morning who says he smelled it a mile away, the mystery creature is thought to be some form of giant octopus. Though marine biologists that have examined the monster have commented that they have never seen anything like it in the cephalopod family before. They speculate that it could be from a yet undiscovered family of sea creatures. Kind of makes you wonder if there's a connection. Nothing's ever been formally established, but it does make you wonder. Something to think about. I'll see you next time for the big finish.